In today's uh, topic, I will discuss root zone technology for best water treatment, a green initiative. Today's uh, presentation is on root zone technology for treatment of best water. This is a green initiative for sustainable development. Now, just see what is the need for best water treatment. We all know that almost 7 to 80 percent of domestic water is released as waste water. Now, the change of mentality is need of the hour. Domestic water as resource, not as best. If untreated or partially treated sewage is discharged into streams, rivers, sea or underground, it pollutes the water leading to harmful effects on living things in particular and complete ecosystem as a whole. Now, there are some parameters which we need to fulfill before discharging the water into streams or underground. The initial act of environmental protection at 1986, which was again notified in 2015 with very strict parameters. And because of these strict parameters, some of the industrialists went to government and they requested to dilute these parameters because they were not able to achieve these parameters. And with the pressure of these uh, big industrialists, government diluted these norms by notification 2017 in which COD limit was removed and cauliflower count was increased to 1000. Due to this, there were many uh, NGOs and uh, organizations who filed the PIL, their approach to NGT and NGT constituted a committee in which uh, IIT Roorkee, Pollution Board, IIT Kanpur experts were involved and NGT 2019 issued notification which are presently applicable and these limits has been restored. In uh, the main recommendation of NGT are that these standards will not only be applicable to metropolitan cities, but will also be applicable to villages and no timeline will be given for the existing STPs. Henceforth, all the STPs has to follow these norms. Now, how we decide the sewage treatment process? So, there are three, four parameters treated sewage quality requirements how we are going to use the effluent after treatment, power requirement, land requirement, the capital cost and operation and maintenance cost. Treatment systems as we all know there are aerobic, anaerobic or combination of both, there are conventional or non-conventional methods, then centralized or decentralized system. This debates which we are talking today is decentralized waste water treatment system. It is collection, treatment, disposal, reuse of sewage water from individual homes, cluster of homes, isolated communities or institutional facilities as well as from portions of existing communities or near the point of best generation. Now, the situations where we can use this decentralized waste water treatment system community cannot afford the cost of conventional STPs because of its higher cost where the community or facility is remote from existing sewers, then we do not have any option except to have isolated system, where localized water reuse opportunities are available, where fresh water for domestic water is in short supply, where existing STP capacity is limited, where residential density is spare and the ecology of river or streams and receiving waters are better managed by smaller volumes of discharge. So, today I am showing the case study of IIT Gandhinagar where I was on deportation and I got opportunity to maintain this 0.6 MLD sewage treatment system based on root zone technology and I also got opportunity to construct another 0.6 MLD sewage treatment system based on this green technology. Now, why root zone technology? Because it has low energy consumption, minimum usage of chemicals, ease of operation and maintenance, there is almost zero discharge. So, what was the challenge? Now, the initial challenge was there was no conventional codal provisions or technology available 
to construct or design this technology. So, the first challenge was to find out the consultant. So, there is a consultant based in Bangalore which is a technical NGO, non-profit organization address I have shown and anybody can refer if we want to have consultancy on this. Now, what is root zone technology? Coming to the main topic, basically this technology was started in western countries way back in 1970s and it is very much in use in Germany, Europe and America. Now, what is root zone treatment system? The term root zone emphasizes the life interaction of bacteria, the roots of the wetland, soil, air, sun and the water. Pollutants are removed by physical, chemical and biological processes like sedimentation, absorption and nitrification as well as through uptake by wetland plants. Root zone treatment systems are planted filter beds consisting of gravel and fine aggregate. Use of constructed wetlands can now be recognized as an accepted low cost eco technology especially beneficial as compared to costly conventional treatment system. There is need to exploit this technology in a developing country like India to gain its maximum gain. The root zone treatment is a natural maintenance free system where the sewage wastewater is purified by the roots of the wetland, growth of bacteria, organic pollutants are decomposed biologically by the bacteria present in the rhizosphere of root plants. Now, this is the systematic diagram. You can see that wastewater comes from the building, it goes to SPS, then to settler, ABR, anaerobic filters, PGF then underground sums, filtration, ultrafiltration and finally to underground sum from where it can be discharged for various purposes. We can directly discharge to the rivers or we can reuse for the flushing system, we can reuse for the horticulture purpose. So, all these components can be decided based on the reuse of the effluent system. This is another systematic diagram where it shows that we can bypass the system based on our requirement. Now, we will discuss step by step how this technology works. So, any colony say I am giving example of IIT Gandhinagar where entire uh, IIT campus has been divided into two parts. There are two sewage pumping stations SPS 1 and SPS 2. These SPS discharges water after collecting from buildings to the entire root zone technology treatment system. These are the real photographs and finally, water is discharged to the Sabarmati river after testing the end parameters. From SPS, this sewage goes to the settler where actually the treatment system starts where sedimentation takes place heavier particles atom to the bottom. It is very much similar to our old technology. These are the photographs we are showing the complete parts of this technology. Settler is this and this is how the water enters after pumping from SPS. This is the diagram what are the components of this settler, baffle walls are there just to increase the travel of sewage. Next component is ABR and AF. ABR is anaerobic baffle reactor and AF is anaerobic filter. So, these parts are accommodated in one building. Here ABR 1 and ABR 2 are shown. This is the diagram photograph taken on ground. It is connected with pipeline system for planted gravel filter and this is the actual components sketch showing the different dimensions of ABR and AF. You can see that the half portion is ABR and another half portion is AF where filter media is also provided. These are the vertical cross sections of technology how the treatment takes place. These are the components of AF and ABR.
Now the next component is PGF which is the base of this root technology where planted gravel filter is put up and a plant named Kena is developed. So, this plant Kena itself is the main components of its entire technology. Its roots helps to take the nutrients from sewage and it develop itself and sewage gets treated. These are the 4 PGF, PGF 1, 2, 3 and 4 and these are the interior cross sections based on which this has been constructed. This is divided into 4 parts, this is another cross section of PGF and after travelling through the filter media it reaches to the other end from inlet to outlet. These are the actual photographs I have taken from the site at IIT Gandhinagar and this is Kena plant which develops over the filter. There are more than 5-6 plants which we can select based on the actually the temperature condition or humidity where these plants grow for Gujarat in Gandhinagar this Kena plant is most suitable. These are the actual photographs and we need to periodically cut this Kena plant and we can replant by removing from one place to other place. So, this is the maximum growth which you can see that how this Kena plant develops and helps in treatment process. These are the type of different type of plants which are suitable for this root zone technology which has been listed here. Now, beyond this point if we do not want to use it for flushing system then we can directly dispose this sewage to any stream or underground because parameters are within the recommended limits by NGT. If we want to use this for further purpose of horticulture of fruit plants or for flushing purpose then these three components we can use at IIT Gandhinagar we tried to use this system from PGF this treated effluent goes to a tank and after this tank this goes to pressure filters you can see the these are three pressure filters one is standby and two are working where sand media is used for filtration purpose. Now, after filtration if we want to use for horticulture purpose it can go directly for horticulture purpose by pumping, but if we want to use it for flushing purpose and we are supplying to residential areas then we have to do the ultra filtration system at IIT Gandhinagar we actually constructed this ultra filtration system, but uh, since uh, we were already sort of water for horticulture purpose and this ultra filtration is actually very costly. So, we bypassed this system and now we are using the sewage effluent only for the horticulture purpose. So, there are bypass systems by which we can use, but if required we can go for ultra filtration also. After ultra filtration is it goes to underground sump where we mixed this chlorine to bring the parameters certain parameters to the limit as per NGT guidelines. And finally, it is goes for the reuse based on our requirement. Another 0.6 MLD STP which was constructed by properly using the topography of the area. So, the main advantage of this technology that we can treat the sewage with zero consumption of electricity. If topography allow, we can have gravity system. Here we have used because there was a stream near to us before it discharges sewage to Savarmati river. So, we use this technology and sewage is going by gravity and no pumping is required here. This is the photograph how the this uh, ABF and settler are constructed at top and PGF cons is constructed in slope. Design criteria there are 3, 4 standards which are uh, guided by the consultant retention time 2 hours where BOD removal is 30 percent then ABR 
we have retention time of 24 hours, here BOD removal is 80 percent, anaerobic filter here the reaction time is 8 hours and BOD removal is 90 percent, then PGF where we achieve BOD removal up to 99 percent. These are the standard parameters which we have discussed and these are the results which we are achieving at IIT Gandhinagar. You can see that at serial number 5 the limits are within the NGT 2009 guidelines. So, we can directly discharge after PGF to any stream. These are again the pictorial presentation of results which we have been achieving at STP and this is the efficiency of road zone system and main thing is cost comparison. Anybody can ask that what is the advantage, why we should go for this technology. So, you can see that construction cost is almost similar 2.75 to 3.5 crores per MLD. This is the cost for both technology, conventional technology based on MBBR technology and also with root zone technology. But see the cost for operation and maintenance. Here for conventional methodology of MBBR, we require almost 25 lakhs amount per year to handle 1 STP of capacity 1 MLD. Whereas, in case of root technology, we only requires 2.5 to 3 lakhs per year. So, here we are achieving a long term gain for any institutions. Advantage of root zone technology, it is most innovative and eco friendly. Tolerance to inflow fluctuations, we can have minimum flow, then also it will work. Both grey and black water can be suitably treated low cost, virtually zero energy consumption and maintenance free plant, no need to use any input such as chemicals, it achieves standard for tertiary treatment with no chemicals, no electricity. Water flows from one device to another by natural slopes avoiding requirement of pumps, can be merged in landscape design and thus requires no additional land. Entire system including reuse, lines, can be planned by gravity if high land is available. No chances of any breakdown as no machinery or electricity is required. It also enhances graha rating and you can achieve 3 or 4 rating with the help of this provision. It has no sludge handling problem and no underground pollutions. Though it is a sewage treatment plant, it does not have order problem. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, I have come to end of my topic and I hope that this topic will be useful for best water treatment and for green buildings. Thank you very much.